I used to hang out with this guy named Bob Lazone, and his brother was Gary. And then we all went to school together, and I had played school with, uh, I mean, played baseball with this other guy named Liga Heimer, who's like a year older than me or two years older. And he had also went to school. And like all our parents kind of knew each other and shit from the Little League and all that shit, so. They just kind of started skating and we followed him down this alley one day like, oh, where the fuck's this guy going? Because like this alleyway, you didn't go down at that time. Because like when I was growing up, you were either like a wannabe surfer kid, a low rider, or like a jock kind of sports guy. That was like the three choices you had then. It was either or, you know what I mean? You were either a dirt bag, a jock, or whatever. But we were like, you know, we were like trying to be surfer kids, long hair, hang ten shores, the whole deal, you know? Right. And like this alley was like Stoner Alley, you didn't go down there like, all the kids had like switchblades and beat you up. It's like we're the lowrider and the stoner guys would go like fight with chains and shit. You know, so like we were in junior high, we're going into junior high. This is like sixth grade, and uh, I was going, God, what are these guys doing down this alley, man? We're not even supposed to go down here. They're crazy, you know? What are they doing? And, like three or four houses down, they jumped the fence, and like you know how you hear that sound of skateboarding in a pool, but it, if you don't skate, you can't like you can't grasp what it is. I guess you know like. It's like a certain sound, like only skaters know, I guess. But we heard that sound, like going, what the fuck is that sound, you know? I couldn't believe it. And like we're all peering through the fence, like one of these, you know, like, well, what are they doing back there? Right. And like we seen them skate, and we're just going, God, if we can't let them see us, they'll see us, they'll kick our ass, you know? We're not supposed to follow these guys. So we kind of like hid, like halfway between the house and the alleyway, and you know, like 10, 15, 20 minutes later, they split. And so we jumped the fence, and we thought, wow, that's pretty crazy, you know? And we had seen pool riding already. On bikes, like I rode my bike in a pool, a whole pool. That's how I found out about pools, basically. So we'd seen guys actually skate, but you know we'd really never tried it yet. So you know after we skated for six months, this is when we kind of stumbled upon this alleyway, the central pool. But the thing about backyard pools, it's just to me, I mean, just like street skating, you're always constantly looking for new spots to try to to try to take your little bag of tricks to this other place to see if you can actually do it from place to place to place to place to place. Uh -huh. I mean, every 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 pool is a different adventure. It's like you know, it's like hunting. You know, it's like everything's got a different way to deal with it, different set of rules, a different environment, depending on what kind of situation. It just all depends whether it's a hut house, a real estate house, a house has been burned down. You know, it all really depends on who owns it and what kind of neighborhood it's in, whether it's like affluence neighborhood or like a lower income neighborhood. Because you know, obviously, if you're going to be in Rialto, you know, where crime is up as opposed to Beverly Hills, where it's like completely the other opposite of the spectrum to where, you know, lots of money, but they're gonna have crazy pools too in their places because a lot of those were built in the old days. You know, I mean, that's the whole key is, you know, you get past the 70s, most pools are hit and miss, fluke, if they're good or not. But usually before the 70s, 50s and 60s, more mostly like the pool boom. Mid 60s is when Blue Haven was like making the most pools they did, you know. And just that's just the beauty of it. It's, you know, you build a pool, something that was never meant to be actually skateboarded in, just like a, a, a handrail, you know, for some people to get down a slide thing was never actually be meant to skateboard in. And that's that's the beauty of skateboarding, it's, it's adapted to like the landscape, kind of like how I say, like Darwin's little survival of the fittest deal, you know. It's just like it's constantly changing. And, constantly just adapting somehow you know i think we're like pool skaters are really modern day pirates who've just taken advantage of any kind of situation i mean sometimes the pools last for a long long time through the years to where like it'll be drained for a while you'll skate and then someone will fill it back up and the apartments will fix it up for a while and then they'll swim in it for three or four years and then it'll go to the shits again and they'll get green water again and i'll go drain it again like four years later i mean pools have lives like a shelf life of 20 years sometimes, but for the most part, pools have a shelf life of, I'd say, three months minimum before they're gone, if they're in a concentrated area where they're gonna actually demo the house and make something new there. It was like the earthquakes in the valley, and all the people, there was a lot of uh, Hispanic neighborhoods that got hit really hard, particularly during that time. And a lot of those neighborhoods, because a lot of Spanish and Mexican people are really superstitious, it was like an act from God or something that when that shit hit, they just up and left. They had everything there. I mean, when I was going to the earthquake pools, man, I was tripping because we would go through houses and apartments and like food would still be on the table. All the food would still be in the fridge, like pots and pans on the stove, like ready to be cooked with like macaroni in it still. I mean, just the craziest stuff, dude. You're just like, just out of there. 
Plus, they got red tagged. I mean, once they got red tagged, you couldn't go back in because it was like dangerous. I mean, if we would have got caught in any of those, we would have been busted big time. But there was so much that you couldn't keep track. I mean, that was by far the best tragedy to come for skateboarding. I mean, tragedies for skateboarders are lovely predicaments because, you know, when the house gets burned down, the house can be vacant until they b built it back up so you could skate the pool. Mudsides happen, great. You know, takes out 10 houses, they can't go back in because they're red tagged. The earthquake comes, that's even better because, I mean, they, they red tagged over. And, and the funny thing, I got the piece of paper still from the LA Times where they actually had all the red tagged buildings of particular areas. And then it was just like gold mine. They just gave me a map to the stars, you know? Just had it so good in there. People always ask me how many pools have I rode. And I really don't know because I've really never kept track. I mean, if we were to go look through my photo collection, I would probably have at least three, four hundred, I would think, minimum. I, you know, but I mean, I, I like to say five hundred. See, I was always in my brother's shadow.